Hi, I'm Victoria and I'm really excited to talk to you today about playing the marimba. When I talk to young students about how to play the keyboard instruments and ask them what makes them nervous about playing these instruments, they often say that it's very confusing trying to figure out how to look at the instrument and see where all of these notes are, and then look at the music and try to figure out what notes to play, and then look up at a conductor and try to figure out how to stay with their ensemble and their school programs. This is a common challenge that lots of players deal with because there's just too many things to look at. So when you look at, ahead at your conductor, if you look down, you can still see your hand way down low. So that's your peripheral vision. So if you look down at the instrument, you can actually see a lot of these notes and, and know which one you're playing, even though you're not really looking at them. To start developing this idea of our peripheral vision, we want to start seeing the keyboard as in the width of it and the height and the length of it in front of us. So we're going to use our one stick as a bit of a reference for our eye. So we're going to play the exercise and we're going to come back to the first note every single time. And we're going to use the other stick as a way to show our eye where to look. And then, and then just like everything we do with our right hand, we want to make sure that we do the same thing with our left hand. So once you feel fairly comfortable moving with one hand, then you can start by adding the other hand in just to fill up the sound. So we're going to play, if this, this rhythm stays exactly the same, we're just going to add a left hand in between every single one of those notes. So it's going to feel like a really nice smooth transition because your right hand is doing exactly what it used to do and your left hand is just filling notes in between and then of course we're going to flip around and do the exact same thing with our left hand going first. After you've done this for a little while, it'll start to feel more comfortable. Yeah, when you first start doing these exercises, you sometimes feel like you're at a tennis match where your head is moving back and forth as you're getting to the really far notes. That's pretty normal. What you want to do, it's, it's pretty normal. What you'd want to do is try to keep bringing your eye back to the first note. It's, it's tricky as the, as the eye gets farther and farther away, and that's okay. You might hit a few wrong notes. In order to switch over to making both of our hands move, we need to switch the pattern from a group of four notes to a group of three notes. So we've been playing one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. We're gonna switch to one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. And move our hands in a bit of a different rhythm in order to be able to go up and down in both directions. It doesn't really matter if your right hand or left hand goes first. As with all kind of exercises like this, which notes do you hit? All of them. <laughs> if, you hit, if you hit one note more times than the others, that's okay. You're just getting a little bit of extra practice on that one note.
We can also move this exercise around the keyboard. We don't have to start on the same single note every time. We can get to know the keyboard in a new position. Uh, it can be really fun to play around with the way that the shapes feel in your body when you're starting on a different note. And it's again, just helping you get to know more and more of the instrument. Um, it's really quite a lot of fun to move up just one note to D because on D our keyboard is symmetrical. Once you've been playing these exercises for a while, you'll notice that they start to feel really comfortable and you might want to try going even a little bit faster. So challenge yourself to see how fast that you can go. Um, you might make some mistakes when you play a little faster, that's okay. You just keep doing it over and over again. These exercises are not about being perfect. They're not about never hitting a wrong note or doing it completely 100% right. That's not really a reasonable goal for any of us as human beings. What we're looking for is to get to know our instrument. We're looking to figure out how to feel what it feels like to play all of these notes. So don't beat yourself up if you hit a few wrong notes. You'll probably hear that I missed a couple along the way and I've been doing these exercises for a long time. All right, let's see how fast I can go. I'm going to take some of these techniques now and apply them in a practical context, which is to actually play some music. We work our way around these instruments, and then we also need to be able to learn to perform something. So I'm going to try really hard not to look at the instrument. I'm going to play the piece, but I'm going to have the music up in front of me, and I'm going to try to keep my eyes up on the music and not look down. I'm going to see how many of these notes I can see in my peripheral vision and feel in my physical space.